how to use Jira for beginners. So this is the web page. It is atlassian.com slash software slash Jira. Jira is a development tool that allows software developers to plan, track, and work faster. So the way that we will begin this is by clicking the get it free option. Here you can just click next or you can select a second product as well. You can only select one of these. I'm going to select Confluence and then let's click next and continue with Google. Now here under your site, you're going to type out what is to become your domain. So I'm just going to type in. Let's go with that. And from here, they're going to ask you a couple of questions. You can skip these if you want. Now my site is starting up. This is going to take about five minutes tops. Now let's type in the name of our team. So let's say our name is let's type that in. And here we can choose templates. I'm just going to stick to the recommended one, which is the campaign management. But here, as you can see, we have loads of different templates that you can use. There's also software development, work management, marketing, and stuff like that. I'm just going to stick to the default one. Now, this is the key. It's automatically generated. And the keys are just a series of short letters that tell people what pieces of work are related to our project. Now, if we go here to the project type, we can select either company managed or team managed. In this case, you're probably going to want to do team managed. So let's click create project. Now, these are the tools that you can use to further help your experience with Jira. So, for example, if you already have Slack, if you already have Google Sheets, you can import them into Jira. And that means you're not going to be starting from scratch. So let's click skip. And here we go. We're on the home page. Now, the first thing that you want to know is what are these options right here? So here in the summary, that basically describes what has happened and kind of tracks the statistics of the project. Here in the board, you can change these names. So for example, if you're working on a video, I can create a video topic. So for example, I can do how to use Jira. Now here I can add multiple people and assign different tasks to them. So let's say for example, instead of planning here, it is called video in progress, for example, here you can say, here you can type in editing, here you can type in thumbnail, and here you can add multiple people and assign each one of these to those different people. So let's say I have a bunch of different topics here in the not started section and someone's job is to make the video. So that's someone I'm going to add that. Now, who are we going to pick? Well, I'm going to add people. So here another person can drag one of these topics in the video in progress. Once they're done, they can send that video in for editing where it can be edited by some other person. Then once they're done, they're going to drag it into the thumbnail. The person who does the thumbnails, they can make the thumbnail and then send it in for review. Oh, these can be, these are supposed to be switched. And then if they have approved that video, the person who uploads the videos, for example, can just go into done. And this, what I've showed you right here is basically the route that Jira is made around. So here, if we go into the list, we can create certain tasks and then we can edit the due date of those tasks. How important are those tasks? Who is assigned to those tasks and stuff like that. So let's say, for example, let's say that this is the marketing task and the status is not started. Now to add a category, simply click in this field right here. And this will be now let's say that this is the category, we can assign different people, we can assign due dates, and the priority, we go further out here, you can if you don't want some of these, you can just click here and then hide field, for example. And there we go. 
Now let's go to calendar. And if you make enough tasks, this calendar is probably going to be filled to the brim. And I love using the calendar because it helps me orientate a bit more. If we go to the timeline, this is very similar to the calendar, but some people like this more. I want you to know that everything in here is one singular project. So if we go to summary and create a project, we're actually going to be creating two projects because this is going to be the second project. Let's go to forms. Now forms are questions. Using forms is just a simpler way to just get the information out there that you want. So so here we can put that information in and we'll get the answers here, description here, maybe an attachment here. You can move these around, edit them and so on. Now let's go to pages. Now to use pages, I actually had to log in to the previous account. So let's just go here. Let's go to the pages. Here we got notifications about the things that I did while this account was logged off. So let's connect to Confluence. Now, what is Confluence? Jira and Confluence are both developed by the same company, and that is Atlassian. And while Jira is a project management tool, Confluence is a collaboration tool used by the team members to share knowledge and so on. So let's just close this. Now here in the issues, we have the tasks topics here we can click on each and every one of them comment add an issue if for example these are some kind of bugs we can just comment here maybe get a screenshot attach a screenshot here and stuff like that reports is basically the reports are basically different kind of ways that you can see the statistics of the project and the remaining two options are not that important we can add a shortcut a shortcut is basically well if it's kind of hard to type in your link they can just do there you go we can do that and then add the shortcut now they're not gonna have to type in the entire domain they can just type that in and it will leave them lead them to this website here we can change the icon of the project the name the key and stuff like that now of course with the team you're gonna have your responsibilities as well here if you go to your work we can see the work that i've been assigned by the previous account so here you go make five ads on instagram now there's one more thing that i want to show you and that is the pricing now if we go to this page right here we can see the pricing and to be completely honest with you i think free is enough for most of the things that you want to do and i recommend you actually starting with free and as you get more experience as the need to have certain plans become bigger and bigger then you can choose to pay for the plans and there you go that's how to use jira for beginners thank you so much for watching this video if you found this tutorial helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and as always, see you in the next video.